Welcome back. We're going to be talking about uh, division of polynomials. We're kind of going to go old school today a little bit. And uh, in honor of that, I wanted to point out some old school stuff that I grew up with. This essentially, all these things are now on my phone. Obviously an old school phone, but, you know, beatbox, a... Uh, a boombox, excuse me, we got a Walkman, this was the coolest thing ever at the time, with your cassette tape that you could make mixes on. This is a portable CD player, that was a step up, but of course you couldn't really do anything with this because it um, would lose track. And then this is my very first computer game system. This is a long, long way from your new PS whatever 4 or 3 you're on right now, and your Xbox One E, I don't even know what they are. But this is old school, all right? So let's let's do all some old school math right now. Old school long division. Love long division. I know you do too. Put the top number inside, right? That's what we're going to divide. Put a divisor on the outside, 24. Uh, 24 goes into 29 one time. And then I, I take this and I multiply it over here and I put it here, right? And then what I do here, I subtract... 29 minus 24 is 5, and then I bring down this number to, how many times is 24 going to 52? It goes in twice, 2 times 24 is 48, All right? because 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4. Subtract again, and that gives me 4. Bring it down again, and that gives me 8. 24 goes into 48 twice. 2 times 24 is 48, remainder, no remainders. So, 122 times 24 is 2,928. Old school, baby. All right, old school, just like these floppy disks. And floppy disks, that would store all my files for class and whatnot. <clears throat> It's ridiculous um, how many of these you used to have. All right, so now we're going to actually do these with polynomials, all right? So we're going to have 2x to the third plus 14x squared plus 27x plus 9. We're going to do this just the same way. Think about this as a digit, a digit, a digit, a digit, a place value, right? Now, if we were skipping a place value, we would need to put a zero on it, okay? x plus 3. Now, this will be a little bit different. Instead of 24, this is instead of a 2 and a 4, this is an x and a 3. And I really care about the first thing. What do I have to multiply x by to get 2x to the third? Well, I have to multiply a 1, so I have to multiply by 2 and x squared. So 2x squared times x is 2x to the third. Now, I'm taking that, and I'm going to multiply it by the 3 as well, because I have 2... Think of them as digits. They're not digits. They're place values, right? So 2 times 3 is 6x squared. All right? And then what did we do over here? We minus. And I always put this subtraction sign over here. 2x to the third minus 2x to the third is gone. And if you don't do this and it doesn't subtract and equal 0, you've done something wrong. 14x squared minus 6x squared is 8x squared. What do we do? We bring down the next one. So then I'm going to do plus 27x. See, I have two things here, so I need to have two things here. If I had three terms here, I would need to have, make sure I had three terms over here. So what do I have to multiply x by to get 8x squared? Well, I need to multiply it by 8 and an x. 8x times x is 8x squared. Multiply it again. 8x times 3 is 24x. And we're going to subtract 8x squared minus 8x squared cancels. 27x's minus 24x's is 3x's. Bring it down. Plus 9. What do I have to multiply x by to get 3x? Well, I need to multiply it by a 3. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 3 is 9. And I subtract and check that out. 0. So I have no remainder. So when I divided 2x to the third plus 14x squared plus 27x plus 9, I got an answer of 2x squared plus 8x plus 3. In other words, this is a factor, and this is a factor too, right? 
Factors are two things that multiply to something else. So that's a factor of this original polynomial. Let's see what we got here. Let's try this one. X to the third minus 17. Oh, I'm missing an X squared. I have to have that X squared term. How many X squareds do I have? I have zero. So when I put that in there, I'm going to do X plus three, and I'm going to divide that into three X to the third plus zero X squared minus 17 X plus 30. All right, here we go. So what do I have to multiply x by to get 3x to the third? I have to multiply that by 3x squared. Now I'm going to actually multiply that back out here. I get 3x to the third. 3x squared times 3 is 9x squared. I'm subtracting. These cancel. 0 minus 9 is negative 9x squared. I'm going to bring the next one down, minus 17x. Would I have to multiply x by to get negative 9x squared? So we have to multiply that by negative 9x. Negative 9x times x is negative 9x squared. Negative 9x times 3 is negative 27x. I always put this subtraction sign on the outside. Negative 9 minus negative 9 is 0. It cancels. This is the biggest problem for most kids. They screw this up. Negative 17 minus negative 27 is really like negative 17 minus negative 27 is really plus 27. So that's going to be a 10x. Then I'm going to bring down 30 plus 30. Again, that is the number one reason why kids struggle with this. You know how to do long division. It's not anything that, that difficult. But the subtraction right there is very hard for some of you, and you're going to screw that up. So be very careful. Would I have to multiply x by to get 10x? I have to multiply by 10. So then I have 10x. 10 times 3 is 30. And when I subtract it, I get 0, 0. They both cancel out. I have no remainder. So my answer again would be 3x squared minus 9x plus 10. All right, let's try this one. Well, this is a uh, VHS player. You know, some of you obviously know DVDs and Blu-rays, but this is what we had movies on before. And even DVDs and Blu-rays are going away now. All right, so I'm going to do x plus 4, and I'm going to divide it into x to the 4th plus 9x to the 3rd plus 10x squared minus 41x minus 7. All right, x times x to the 3rd equals x to the 4th. Subtract it. 9 minus 4 is 5x to the third. Bring down the next one. To get to 5x to the third, I need to multiply by 5x squared. So that's going to be 5x to the third. 5 times 4 is 20x squared. Subtract it. 10 minus 20 is negative 10x squared. Bring it down. Would I have to multiply x by to get negative 10x squared? I need to multiply that by negative 10x. So that's going to be negative 10x squared minus 40x. <clears throat> Subtract those. Those cancel. Negative 41 minus negative 40 is like plus 40. So that's going to be negative 1x. Bring it down. Got to multiply this by negative 1. So that gives me negative x minus 4. Subtract, negative 7 minus negative 4 is a negative 3. All right, so now let's talk about this answer a little bit. This answer is going to be x to the third plus 5x squared minus 10x minus 1. And I have a remainder, right? Remainder, negative 3. So that is totally one acceptable answer. All right? You can totally write it just like that if you'd like. The other way we will write this, all right, the other way we're going to write this is exactly the same thing. Oh, so close to what I exactly wanted. All right, this remainder of negative 3 means I have a little bit more. I have negative 3 parts of this left. So I could also write negative 3 over x plus 4. Either one of these answers is going to be okay with us. All right? All right. So which one of these divisors, example 3 or 4, is actually a factor of this? In other words, when we divided it out, it divided evenly, right? 
Factors are the things that divide evenly in. So if we have no remainder, then this x plus 3 was actually a factor of that. Just want to point it out because factoring has a lot to do with this division. All right, so this time we want to see if n plus 2 is a factor of n to the 4 plus 2n to the 3rd plus 5n plus 10. If it is a factor, I'm going to have no remainder, right? So let's see. n plus 2. So I have n to the 4th plus 2n to the 3rd. Do I have any n squareds? No. So 0n squareds plus 5n plus 10. So here we go. n times n to the 3rd gives me n to the 4th plus 2n to the 3rd. Subtract it. These cancel. Ooh, this is like 0n to the 3. Bring it down. 0n squared. What I have to multiply n by to get 0? Oh, I'm going to have to add that 0n squared. So that's 0n to the 3 plus 0n squared. Subtract. That gives me 0n squared. This is kind of boring with this one, isn't it? Bring it down. What do I have to multiply n to get 0n squared? Well, that's 0n. So that's going to be 0n squared plus 0n. Subtract it. Now I have some math. 5n plus 10. To get to 5n, I need to multiply by 5, so that gives me 5n. 5 times 2 is 10. Subtract, and I got a remainder of 0. Since I have a remainder of 0, it is a factor. Right? It is a factor. There is no remainder there. Okay? All right, right over here we have a little old school hip-hop, Run DMC. Back in the day, love the Run DMC. All right. So now we're going to do this, we've been talking about it being factors, so we're going to use the division and we're going to factor this completely, all right? See, uh, we can do this a couple of ways, but we're going to factor this completely. So, 3x to the third plus x squared minus 3x minus 1, and I know that this is one of my factors. In fact, that's going to be in my answer. That is one of my answers. I'm going to put it down here just to remind myself. That is one of my answers. All right. So let's take a look. What I have to multiply x by to get 3x to the third? I have to multiply by 3x squared. So then I have 3x to the third plus, well, negative 3x squared, right? When I subtract, these cancel. 1 minus negative 3 is actually 4x squared, correct? Yep. All right. So then what do we have there? We have, bring this down, minus 3x. So when I have to multiply x to get 4x squared, I need to multiply that by 4x. So that is 4x squared minus 4x. And when I subtract, negative minus a negative is a positive 1x. Bring this down. Multiply that by 1. Right? 1 times 1 is x minus 1, and that's perfect. All right, so now let's take this out. So my factors are x minus 1 and 3x squared plus 4x plus 1. Now, this I can't do anything with. I already know that's part of my answer, but can I factor this? I might be able to factor this more. Let's see, first times last. Are there two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to 4? Yes. So this is now going to be 3x squared plus 3x plus 1x plus 1, right? So let's keep factoring that. So now I'm going to group. So this is 3x and then x plus 1. I can't take anything out here, so that's going to take a 1 out times x plus 1. So now I have x plus 1 and 3x plus 1. And don't forget, we already said my first answer, x minus 1. All right? So I did the polynomial division, and then I used it the answer, and I factored everything else out. All right? So I want you to try these two on your own, see what you get. All right, the first one I divided by v minus 3. Got it down. And I had a remainder of 8. So again, you can write it as 7v squared plus 5, 5v minus 9 plus the 8 over v minus 3, the 8 parts over the what we're dividing, or I could write it as a remainder of 8. 
Over here, I divided by x plus 2. I got 3x squared minus 5x minus 10. Hopefully, you did as well. Then I wrote it out in my two factors, and I wanted to factor completely. Nothing I could do with the first factor. The second factor, I needed two numbers to multiply negative 30 and add it to negative 1. I had them as negative 6 and 5. I did a little grouping, and I got 3x plus 5 and x minus 2. So all my factors, and again, you would need all of these, x plus 2 times 3x plus 5 times x minus 2. Even though we were given the first one, you need it in your answer. All right? I know these are lengthy, and you probably are groaning a little bit, but it's not something that's terribly difficult. Remember, related to what you've done before, long division in the past, related to what you've done before, these are factors, and I think you'll be just fine with them. All right, go out there and be, the ch be a positive change in this world.